Hello and welcome to Kimber Bushcraft and to my new series Vikings from A to O. And uh, today, uh, as promised, I'll uh, handle the first letter in the alphabet. Uh, it's A. And uh, my video this week will be about the Acer and the Vana. So um, it's the gods, the Nordic gods from um, our mythology. Um, yeah, I got something uh, I want to show you. Tell you a little bit about that, and later I have a little uh, special video I made uh, where I explain uh, the most important things about the Viking uh, gods, the Acer and the Vanner, in English, uh, Acer and Vanir. But and you saw I brought uh, Cornelius with me. Uh, we are out here. He loves to be out here in Kimber Camp, and uh, it's been a while since I've been out here. So it's always good to come out here and see everything is okay, and there's been no intruders. So. Yeah, yeah. And spring has uh, finally arrived here. We have some uh, great weather, uh, about 15 degrees Celsius, and uh, okay warm nights. So, uh, hopefully, you will be able to uh, come out here and make an overnight. I'm looking very much forward to that. I just uh, there's a lot of things in my life I have to uh, tend to before my uh, my YouTube channel, so uh, family and so on. So, uh, yeah, you have to wait for that. But uh, it's wonderful to be out here in Kimber Camp and together with little Cornelius. Now I'm going to show you a little thing and um, yeah, uh, hope you'll find that interesting. Yeah, and I bought this little set from uh, Grimfrost. Uh, it is three uh, gods from the North mythology. I think they are really cool and I'm going to talk about uh, these gods and some other gods. First here we have Odin and uh, as you can see his arm is gone and that's how it was found in uh, I think it was Sweden these founds are from Sweden or uh, Iceland uh, you can read it on the uh, web page for Grimfrost but uh, when they found this figure the arm was missing and of course they didn't want to uh, replicate anything that wasn't true so Odin is only have one arm on this little figure and this is Thor or Thor as we call it in Danish uh, the Thunder God, and uh, you can see he has a Mjolnir here, his little hammer, sitting down on a throne, and looking very alert. And uh, this one is Frey. Yeah, he's also a god uh, in North mythology. I'm going to tell you about him, but look at this. Can you see this? A little phallus, because this was. Uh, uh, fertility god. That's why he has this phallus on uh, some of the portraits of him. And uh, these figures are made of bronze, uh, very heavy. And you can see how tall they are compared with my hand. So I have them uh, down in my um, working shop where I make all my editing and my leather works and so on. So they're going to uh, Stay there and protect me from uh, all the things that can happen, trolls and so on. Yeah, yeah. and uh, as I said before, I made a little uh, video where I talk about the uh, North God, the Acer, and a little bit about the Vanir or Vana. And um, yeah, I hope you like it and I hope you find it interesting. And while you do that, I'll have a good horn of beer here. I brought a beer from home and uh, Want to sit and drink that here, looking out on my little forest here. So, skål everyone, hope you enjoy. Mm. The gods in North mythology belong to two major clans. Asa, in English Asir, and Vanir, in English Vanir. Odin, Frigg, Thor, Loki, Balder, Hud, Heimdall and Tyr are the most elevated gods of Acer and are known as the main gods. The second clan, Vana or Vanir, contains the fertility gods and counts Njord, Freya and Freya as their most notable members. Despite the difference between them, it was necessary for the two families to combine the power and ideas for all to prosper. The Asam function in mythology was provided for the maintenance of the world's order. The opponents were the giants that they constantly were in conflict with. However, the Acer must not be seen as the good and the giants as the evil. Instead, the Acer 
represented the man's society and culture which were involved in an endless struggle against nature. On their sides, the giants represented the untamed nature, which meant that in many cases the Aesir also needed the help of the giants. And in the old days you were totally dependent on nature. Here you found the resources needed for survival, but it also offered numerous dangerous and destructive forces. The mythology struggle between Aesir and giants was therefore a picture of human struggle for survival in a world subjected to nature forces. The first three Aesir was the brothers Odin, Vile and Ve. And here is some of the most important North God and Goddess. Odin, the greatest among the North Gods was Odin, the Alfather of the Aesir. He was the mighty ruler of Asgard, the place the gods were living. He was always on the quest for knowledge with his two raven and his two wolves. He is the god of war, but also of poetry and magic. He is famous for sacrificing one of his eyes in order to be able to see the cosmos very clearly. And his thirst for wisdom saw him hang in Yggdrasil for nine days and nine nights until he was blessed with the knowledge of the runic alphabet. Thor was Odin's most widely known son. He was the protector of humanity and the powerful god of thunder and had a hammer called Mjölnir. Among the Norse gods, he was known for bravery, strength, healing power, justice. Fire was the god of fertility and one of the most respected gods of the Mnir clan. Fire was a symbol of prosperity and pleasant weather condition. He was frequently portrayed with a large phallus. Fyr was the god of war and bloodshed, also known as the bringer of order and justice. He was best known for his sacrificing of his arm to Fenris so that the gods could trap the giant wolf. Hud was a blind god associated with night and darkness. He was the son of Odin and his wife Frigg. Odin's wife Frigg was a god of beauty, love, fertility and fate. She was the mighty queen of Asgard, a north goddess who was gifted with the power, divination and yet was surrounded by an air of secrecy. She was the only goddess allowed to sit next to Odin. Balder was the son of Frigg and Odin and was described it as living between heaven and earth. Balder was known for his beauty, kindness and fairness. He was believed to be immortal, but he was killed with a mistletoe. Loki was a teething god who could shapeshift and take up animals' forms. He was guilty in the death of Balder. Upon learning the mistletoe was the only thing that could hurt Balser, he placed a branch into the hands of the blind god Hud and tricked him into throwing it at Balser, killing him. Freya was one of the most sensual and passionate goddess in North mythology. She was associated with much of the same qualities as Frigg, love, fertility and beauty. She was the sister of Freya. Heimdall was known as the shiniest of all gods because he had the whitest skin. He was the son of Odin and stood at Midfrost, the rainbow bridge that connected Asgard with Midgard, the world of humanity, and remained forever on alert, guarding Asgard against attack. Hel was the goddess and ruler of North Underworld, of the same name, also known as Helheim. She was pale-skinned and appears to be deathly like She houses anyone who entered Hel. Vida was son of the supreme god of Grit, and his powers were matched only by that of Thor. Vale was the son of Odin, who avenged Balder's death by killing Hud, the god who pierced Balder with mistletoe. Aegir, who was the king of the sea, was in the mythology one of the three giants living together with the Asa. The name Aegir is associated with the word water and he is a pacification of the sea. His forces can be used both for good and evil, but have all the time with the water and sea to do. In contrast to gods in other cultures, the Aesir was not perceived as immortal. They could stay young by the help of the goddess Idun's magical apple. But at Ramnarok they should almost all die. Only the children of the gods would survive and rule over the next world, along with Balder and Hörder, who would return from the death. 
The Asa tro, which means the one that believes in the Asa, is the worship of the old Nordic god. However, it's not just about gods, but also about the worship of giants and ancestors. However, the Vikings did not have a name for their religion when they met the Christianity. Therefore, they called their religion for the old custom, Forn Sitra. And the largest Asa community in Denmark is called Forn Sitra. It was founded in 1997 and has approximately 600 members. There are also Asa communities in Sweden, Norway and Iceland, as well as some individual groups in the UK and the United States. One of the most important rituals is called blood. It is a sacrifice to the god in order to get something back in return, for example, good weather, healthy livestock, fertility and luck in battle. The blood is typically performed four times a year, in the winter solstice, the spring equinox, the summer solstice and autumn equinox. The winter and summer solstice are representatively the shortest and longest day of the year, while the spring and autumn equinox are when the day and nights are equal in length. I hope you find this interesting and perhaps learned a thing or two about the Nordic gods. And of course, uh, much of the uh, content in this little clip is uh, something that I mean is true. And uh, there will be probably be other uh, Viking interested uh, North culture out there that will say it's not true that this is the most important gods and so on. But uh, for me, uh, those gods that I'm talking about in this uh, little clip is uh, the gods that I feel is most important in, in the North mythology. So now I'm going to uh, make not coffee. Uh, those of you who saw my latest video will probably know I'll uh, drink some chaga coffee. And uh, yeah, chaga. I made a video about that. Uh, and the last time I was out in the forest, the black forest, together with Cornelius, uh, I found a piece of. I found a tree with a lot of chaga on and uh, I'm going to prepare my fire with that and uh, then uh, prepare some uh, chaga coffee over the fire here. So yeah, now we'll see. It's not much I have used uh, chaga for uh, tinder. Uh, it's called uh, true tinder funcus because it's very easy to ignite with a flint and steel and I'll do that today and then uh, make my uh, chaga coffee. So, yeah. Oops. Open use. You just get it up at that, yeah. This guy like, right? It's the chaga I found. And these two are going in the water. Boil them. And this one, I'll see if I can cut it a little bit in pieces and then use it for my tinder. Nice little piece there. Cornelia is very interested in what I'm doing, as you can see. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps she likes chaga, I don't know.
Let's see here. There it was. Yeah. Chaga is going to be boiled uh, at least half an hour, so it's a long process, but it's worth it because it tastes delicious. And then you just take these two chunks and put in, and uh, shortly it will begin to boil, and yeah, you just have to wait half an hour. Boiling. As you maybe can see, it's beginning to get brown, and actually, uh, fresh chaga uh, cooked this way. It's going to be just as dark as coffee. Yeah, I'm looking very much forward to tasting this again. Got some uh, energy bar with me. I think I'll eat that together with my chaga coffee. You can hear Cornelius is barking a little bit because he thinks there's someone in our forest. I don't know, I can't see anyone, but he's on alert. My energy bar that I made a couple of videos ago, very tasty, delicious and uh, full of good stuff, including some 
some linen. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, and now the Jagger coffee is finished. Been cooking for half an hour. Let's cut this one off. Let's see. Oh yeah. I'm going to do it right here. Yeah. And you see it's just as black as coffee or brown. Oh yeah. The good thing is this little thing is also good in chaga coffee. Oh yeah. And it's also strong, just like coffee. Yeah, I know that Chaga is very hard to find in uh, other countries than here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, perhaps Northern part of the USA, Canada for sure. Perhaps something in uh, Northern part of uh, Scotland, here in Denmark and Old Scandinavian and of course uh, Russia. And I know that Russian, uh, uh, the, the Russian use this for uh, uh, cancer treatment because there's a good properties in this chaga that uh, it can reduce um, cancer lumps. Uh, that at least that what I have written. And um, yeah, there's a lot of good things in chaga. And um, as I said, they use it in in Russia for health. Mm. Oh yeah. I think I'll go over on the Viking throne and uh, drink the rest of my Chaga coffee and smoke some pipe. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a short video this week, but nevertheless I hope you find it interesting. And uh, then I have to decide the next letter B, what it should be about. First, I was thinking about float, but uh, I told about I told you about that in this video, so I'm not sure it's it's a subject that I can tell you much more about, perhaps. But then another thing about the Viking culture with the letter B, I have to think about that, and it won't be in the next time because I want to. Uh, spend it over some months, perhaps years, before I'm finished with my Viking series uh, from A to O. Yeah. But uh, this will be all for now folks. I hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, from Kimber Camp together with Cornelius and a nice cup of Jaga coffee. I call it Jaga coffee because it tastes more like coffee than uh, a tea. I don't like tea, but this I really like this taste. So I know you can buy it online, uh, Chaga, and uh, I think you should try it and see how it tastes. And um, yeah, for Tinder, I prefer uh, Amadou uh, for Tinder fungus because it's easier to work with. Uh, the Chaga is very hard, and when you hold it on the Flintstone, it's very hard to uh, get it right so that it catches the spark. So I think I'll uh, use my Amadou when I'm making uh, fire and Chaga when I'm making my Chaga coal. Yeah, again, I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye bye. Take care.
Oh.